anymore. John, uh, tell us a little bit about your background uh, in music and, and flying. Well, like a lot of our young student members, I started music in, in school, uh, probably the seventh grade, um, played saxophone, clarinet, then picked up the guitar later on. Um, aviation was very similar. It uh, started younger. I think I was probably six or seven when I got my first model airplane. And that, uh, that kicked off a lifelong love of aviation. Uh, it's interesting how people, when they're very young, I think I talked to a, a sociologist about um, students who are five and six years old, they pretty much know what they want to be if you'll just listen to them. They know what they want to be later. And I, I had both music and aviation on my mind when I was very young. And so just pursued it from all different angles. And um, it's it's where it is now. Uh, at, you know, flying musicians is an association of pilots uh, and musicians uh, who have a passion for both. And, you know, so when an airplane flies overhead, we're the ones that look up. And um, you'll know the ones that have a passion for, for aviation and music by how they respond to uh, something going on in that realm. What's the what's the interconnection between between flying and and music? Well, um, it, it's really fascinating when you when you not only uh, experience it yourself, but when you listen to others tell stories. Uh, you know, whether it's military pilots or, or commercial pilots um, and musicians um, who just you, you, for some reason you can see the connection. Uh, early on, and I think some of the some of the connection is the what you're taught when you're growing up. Now, music is not necessarily unique to this, but it's it's very strongly oriented towards people who are um, able to practice, uh, able to take something very difficult, break it down into small pieces, and practice, and then put it all together and perform. And that's something that, as a music student, you, you learn. Um, you know, you continually going on to harder and harder pieces, um, and uh, and a lot of times you're memorizing parts as well. But you're you're playing inside of a group typically, and that group is like your your airplane uh, and and the environment that you're in, uh, as well as your conductor, who's very similar to the ATC. Um, so when you're when you're taught to multifunction, when you're taught to practice, taught to take take something difficult and break it down and and, and learn it and practice it uh, for perfection, uh, that's something that once you find out that flying an airplane is very similar, it it doesn't take a rocket scientist to to really then make that leap between what they have already learned as a student and be able to apply it in the, in the field of aviation. It's really fascinating to me, and it has been, and, and again, the stories that you hear from people are just outrageous. Um, that they just, you know, that, that a lot of times, uh, personally, when I was doing upset training, uh, I felt like I was cheating because even though my head was down and my eyes were covered, you know, I could, I could hear what was going on. I could, I could sense it. I mean, I was more in tune to the noises, the air rushing or not rushing, the, the engine revving up or, or not, or being powered back, uh, this, even the sound of the propeller. Uh, so those are things that, as a, as a musician, you, you are very in tune to, to sounds. You, you're, you, you, you personally have to be playing a part but you're and, and make sure that your instrument is in tune. But you're also listening for your your band members uh, next to you to see if they're on the same page, which they should be, but whether or not they're in tune, because um, you're listening for that, you know, and and so it's it's just it's just really fascinating how how similar uh, the characteristics, the skills, the attributes uh, are uh, for both. And 
whether it's a, a student musician who wants to learn to fly, and we've taken 14 of those now through our solo uh, scholarship program, um, or whether it's a musician who then later wants to learn how to fly. It's just, it's just crazy how it just all kind of, they come together. I mean, they just do. Uh, I've got, I can't tell you how many professional musicians who are learning to fly or thinking about a career as uh, flying, whether it be for uh, corporate or commercial flying. So it's, it's really fascinating. Well, just in, in your initial description of, uh, you know, taking complex uh, things and breaking them down into, into smaller pieces and practicing and looking for perfection, until you said the word music, I was thinking uh, of piloting an, an aircraft because, as, as you said, they're, they're so similar. Um, and I, I guess that's that's why it, it, it's, it comes together. Um, and I've heard people say they can they can hear the airplane sing to them, uh, whether it's the wind in the wires or, or like you said, the, the sounds of the air rushing by or the or propeller or whatever. So it's it really is a, a fascinating uh, comparison between uh, music and and flying. Yes, yes, it is. And I, again, it's just to hear the stories of, of folks. Um, and I can tell you a few now if we have time. And um, absolutely, we were at the. AOPA summit in Palm Springs, the last one they had there. Uh, and s starting in 2010, uh, AOPA had us perform music, uh, members perform music at the summits. And this gentleman came up to me with a backpack and he said, Oh, this is too cool. I just flew in from Houston. And he did. He flew his Aerostar in, you know, by himself. And, uh, and he says, uh, I, I'm, you know, I was a military pilot and, and commercial pilot and then finally ended up retiring from flying overseas routes with FedEx. And uh, so he pulled out of uh, uh, his uh, flugelhorn, which is a trumpet that's different for those who don't, who don't know what a flugelhorn is. You, you may know who um, somebody like um, uh, Chuck Mangione was probably one of the most famous uh, flugelhorns. But he pulled it out of his backpack and, and he said, I was in high school in the band and I wanted to fly military jets. And so I asked the counselor and the recruiters, what do I have to do? And they said, well, you have to get a, a college degree. And he said, well, what in? It said, it doesn't matter. So he got a degree in music performance um, and then went into the military, became a, a fighter pilot and an instructor pilot and such went on. But in, he always played music wherever he went. He'd take his flugelhorn with him, and when they'd have a layover somewhere, he'd go out to the club at night and, and play music and sit in with the, the bands. And he did that all over the world. And um, so it's just like that, that story really encapsulates what what we knew and what we heard from folks like uh, United, uh, who back in the 1970s actually went around to college music programs uh, recruiting for pilots uh, because they knew then. And I mean, so again, it's not a secret. It's not something I came up with or, or made it. It's just something that connected and, and came together um, in the Flying Musicians Association. But but these are these are stories like there's just countless stories like that. Uh, I was doing a seminar at Sun Fun years ago, and uh, two gentlemen were in the uh, in the audience, and they said, "Well, we met in military flight training, and then we both were commercial pilots throughout our careers, and we're musicians." And he says, "Which is so funny." He says, "When they were in flight training, it was the it was the musicians who were able to grasp things quicker." Because when they were told to do something, unlike an engineer who now wants to figure out why it's done and whether I can do it better, um, they were told to fly a heading and an altitude, and that's what they did. You know, it, it's like music. You, you're, you, here's the deep, here's the beat, here's the the note. You know, you you do this, and so that's that's a story that is is um, continually repeated. That it's it, it, usually it's the musician in the group that can do a better job of learning and flying than an engineer uh, because of the ability to to be precise 
and and do it rather than sitting there trying to decide why why, why should I do that so what's the uh, what's the the genesis of the, of the uh, the organization itself obviously people have been playing music and flying for for a number of years but uh, what was the I guess the the seed that that was planted that uh, helped form the organization well it it's um Again, one of those things that over time it changes, um, not drastically, but everybody has their own recollections and uh, of how things started. But uh, for me, primarily, it was um, a meeting uh, that I had uh, at, at AirVenture, and uh, Roy Clark was giving a um, a press conference. And I was really wanting to get there to that press conference. And it was a long track, as you know, you're, you're walking all over the place and don't, don't take the trams if you want to get somewhere fast. Uh, so I, I got there after it had started and there was no room for anybody. It was full. It was inside the old at the building at the time. And so I crawled up on the floor and sat in the very front and listened. And it was just, I was fascinated. I had no idea that Roy Clark was a pilot. Um, I mean, it just it slipped by me. I knew about John Denver. Um, I knew about a lot of uh, musicians, uh, but did not know about Roy Clark. And I was just listening to him. It's just fascinating. And so when it was done, I went up to him. I said, "Boy, this is really cool. I understand you have an airstrip, you know, on your property outside of Tulsa. And a fly-in." for musicians would be great and you know we could all get around and, and sit around and jam and, and have a great time and talk aviation too and and his eyes lit up and uh, Roy is very demonstrable anyway I mean he was just a great entertainer uh, his face his facial features always um, was probably one of his biggest assets as an entertainer uh, besides the fact that he was an awesome instrumentalist um, but he his eyes lit up and he said boy that would be great well, I was never able to get back in touch with him after that. Um, and, you know, things happened. But to me, having already known about uh, John Denver um, and others, uh, when I found out about Roy Clark, it was like, wow, and this kind of set the seed. So then in talking about doing that, uh, having a fly-in for musicians, um, then uh, my uh, primary instructor had he told me, he said, well, gee, you're going to have to start an association. Um, <laughs> you know, and it's like, really? It's like, I was just wanting to do a little fly in. So, uh, of course, that got my wheels rolling in. And he, being an instructor, I think most of you can relate. Your, your instructors typically know you really well. They get to know you really well. And he always knew that I liked grabbing at brass rings. So he he stuck that one right there in my face, and I couldn't help but grab it. And so that's how it kind of came about. Um, but it's more about you go to a, a an event, a fly-in or something, and and there's always going to be a, a folks sitting around a campfire or something, uh, uh, playing music. At Air Venture, you had Rick Reynolds, uh, musician, and um, so many others um i can't remember everybody's no names but i don't know were you you were at, uh, at air venture uh, many times did you ever play music yourself uh, i did not uh, i am a, uh, a classically trained sousaphone player so it's really hard to get that into a piper cup uh I should have picked mm. up an instrument, something, maybe a flugelhorn or, or a guitar or something. It was a little easier to transport, but uh, <laughs> I know where you're coming from as far as the music goes. And, and going back to that year that Roy Clark was was uh, at Air Venture, uh, he was friends with uh, General Chuck Yeager, who was in charge of the Young Eagles program at the time, and he mm. brought Roy Clark along and pretty much unannounced. And when Roy got there, first of all, as, as you mentioned, he's a, a consummate uh, professional and entertainer. is a very wonderful person. Uh, but just like you, our reaction was, we had no idea that that you were not only an accomplished musician but an accomplished pilot. So uh, you just never know. You know, and and it's it's amazing, and you know, even I guess it's it's that way in everything. You you tell somebody something, and you tell them again, and you told them what you tell them what you told them, and it, it goes on. And um, we're constantly hearing from people. Oh, I didn't know you, this existed, and and that was you know it was getting old in the beginning. But, you know, 
we were only around for a couple of years, but now it's been 12 years. So it's like, really? It's like, how is that? And how does that happen? But, you know, the, the cool thing is when when we do uh, a new member comes on and, and, and says, well, I just found out about this. It's the coolest thing in the world. It's like, yeah, man, it's great that you're here. Finally, you know, great. Come on you know, get on this. So it, the, I guess the excitement from individuals who find that there are others who have these two passions, aviation and music, um, and share it. Um, it, it just, it's, it's really catchy. I mean, it's something that it's hard, it's hard not to get excited about it. And, you know, whether you have a, a little jam, hanger jam, you know, in, at your airport uh, or, or at an event, um, it's it's always fun to to sit around and and share your music a lot a lot of people write music too a lot, a lot of people won't admit it um because they don't feel their their music is good enough but everybody who's done it for a while has this ability just like you do with an airplane to to tweak it and to try different things and um and so it's always nice to sit around play a little music have a little food and um uh, and talk about aviation as well and it's just i mean it's it's hard to get you away from that. And, you know, a lot of wives are saying, you know, are you going to talk about aviation again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, we're going to play some music too and have some fun. Well, I, I think it's also important to uh, talk about your, your members themselves uh, and that there it's uh, all varieties of, uh, of music from instruments, vocal, uh, classical, country, folk. It, it's, it, it's, it, is the entire gamut of of music just like the pilots uh have the entire range sure. of aviation from low and slow to, to really fast sure and that's something we we figured out real early on was it um you know it's a definition of, of a pilot and a musician and it doesn't mean that you have to be an atp pilot to be a pilot um, a student pilot is still a pilot um, and if you fly for fun or if you fly for uh, for business or, or for for your livelihood, um, you're a pilot. And the same way with music, uh, student musicians are musicians. Um, they sometimes don't like to refer to themselves that way. Or somebody who just plays for fun uh, doesn't like to be considered a musician, but they really are. Um, it's just that everybody's at a different level and or a different proficiency level as in flying. And um, like you said, it the genres it, it crosses everyone. Um, and you being a classical uh, sousaphonist, um, there's lots of classical musicians, and that's pretty amazing. There's a um, there's a, an opera singer who is a member, and um, you know he's singing all around the world. I think he was in France at Paris um, a month or so ago, um, performing and. You know, and, and he's a pilot. And uh, Louise Vickerman, one of our founding members, uh, is the principal harpist for the Utah Symphony. Uh, she's also a um, multi-commercial um, pilot, um, and uh, she's—I uh, mean, she's at the top of the game. Uh, Jay Mason is probably one I like to to give a lot of credit to. He's out on the West Coast in the L.A. area and. Jay's uh, uh, been a professional musician all his life. He also teaches. Uh, he plays with the Big Fats, uh, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fats Band. And they tour the world. And he also is a studio musician in the LA area. Um, and he plays on Disney movies and Disney shows and other shows. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but he's also an ATP pilot, uh, rated pilot, and uh, been a, a CFI for years in the LA area, he flies out John Wayne. And, um, the picture you have up there right now, the gentleman on, on our left uh, with our shirt on, that's a, a member from Huntington Beach area, uh, Paul, and, and Paul is one of Jay's students. And um, it's, and, and Paul's a musician too, he plays out locally and uh, his bassist is, he used to play with uh, Beach Boys. And um, so, uh, just a bunch of great people, and and Paul has a turban, uh, a tur turban bonanza. Yeah, one of I guess I don't know. I think there was about eleven of them that were modified. Um, and um, he's a, a great pilot and a, a musician as well. 
if you just got the right brothers award that's what the picture shows mm -hmm. And of course, uh, one of your members that's uh, probably close to uh, the CAF members as well is uh, Aaron Tippin. Oh, you bet. You bet. You got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah. Aaron Tippin. Um, yeah, great guy. Uh, a, a good pilot. Uh, has several different airplanes from, I think, a, um, a Stearman. Stearman, yep. T6. Uh, got a T6, he's got a, a Cub, and and I think he flies a Meridian. I'm not sure about that, but I think that's what it is, it's Hyper. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he's interesting. Um, Aaron has been a big supporter of the association uh, uh, and lent a, a, a saying that we can use for promotion to help to uh, raise money for our scholarship program uh, that we been doing now for well this will be the eighth year we start uh, which is actually it's starting today uh, the floor is open for nominations for um, student musicians uh, 11th and 12th graders who uh, want to learn to fly and their music teacher director has to nominate them um, everyone who's nominated becomes a student member uh, in the association and uh, that's a network of, of people like we just talked about from all walks of life um, and all proficiency levels uh, that they can use to further their interests or their careers if they cho choose that in aviation and in music. Um, and so, yeah, Aaron's been a real big hit and, and he's full of energy, uh, oh, yeah. he's a really nice guy. We talked for years via text and phone and, and we're never able to meet up. We finally met up a few years ago at, at Sun Fun, but he's a he's a really good pilot and a really good musician. And I was not a fan of his. Um, I hate to say that, um, but I was not really into country music. But my wife was, and she uh, she pulled out some of her her albums that she had, <laughs> Aaron. And so now. Uh, she's taught me to to listen to him and and as a matter of fact a song came on the other day and i said that's aaron yeah said, yep uh, there you go so well that's great and you know as as we're going through this uh, at normally um we're talking about world war ii aircraft or stories of world war ii or or uh, you know some of the the, the events of, of the war because that's you know caf that's that's sort of our our uh, our heritage but uh, what you just touched on a little bit about the solo program is why uh, we wanted to uh, give you this platform tonight because caf like so many aviation organizations realize that the our our future the future of our aircraft and our organizations lies with young people uh and you know caf has got a lot of outreach to uh, to try to reach new generations but your program the uh, the solo program is uh, is really how we kind of bring things together and and uh, and I'd like to talk more about that uh, but I just want to remind all of our listeners if you have any questions for John uh, you'd like to find out more about the solo program or whatever we'll, we'll talk about that but just type those in the in the chat box or in the comments uh, if you're on YouTube or, or Facebook and uh, we'll we'll uh, try to answer those questions if we don't get them during the presentation we'll save some time at the end but um, let's let's just talk a little bit about the uh, the, the solo program and and uh, some of the young people who have uh, who have uh, graduated from the program as it work oh it's 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 really something that um i mean uh, we, everybody's had different upbringings and, and and you know not everybody had a lot of money when we were growing up and i came from a large family and, and i was really the only one that that flew uh, later on but um it's that you know through defense thing you know it's that it's the kid looking over the fence. I mean, when I was a kid, I would ride my bike to the airport. And I got chased off the airport property a couple of times, a friend of mine, and I'm gonna pull him into this because he did too. But um, I was wondering why that jet didn't take off, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's because we were out there. Um, but you know, it's 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 a program that, that just brings the kids that are, uh, they're high achievers. Uh, most of the musicians, um, student musicians, are are very good academically, um, and we're looking for you know this. There are lots of programs out there that are are looking at disadvantaged and 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 other folks, but who's who's doing something good 
for the kids that are are really achieving and busting their uh, their books for academics and music and the extracurricular things they do and so you know it was obvious that we're going to go after student musicians um but we wanted of course to to find not just pilots or future pilots but future uh, leaders and so the the criteria is pretty high the bar's hot high for them but but if they have a passion for aviation and you can find that we talked about that earlier um uh, the, the their band director uh, music teacher is a whole lot like a cfi um you know they know the student they spend a lot of time with them um you know practicing and rehearsing and performances they see them in pressure cookers they see them you know when things are up and down and um so we bring them in and and just because they're nominated uh, we can only we, we don't have funds to give them a lot but um but we've given seven uh see it's 14 total so it's about two a year uh in the seven years that the program started and this is a this is a program to get them into aviation um, most of them have just dreamt about it and they were like me when i was a kid you go to the airport and they say get out of here kid you know or, or nowadays you can't even get to that point where they say get out of here um so we introduce them to aviation um, i do a lot of groundwork for them and help them find an instructor or a flight school and um we try to make sure that it's a good fit and that it's everybody is serious about what they're doing um, so, and that's the first thing I tell the, the flight instructors and or the school is that this is their first impression. This is their entry into something. And this is a, a student who has a passion. I don't want to run them off and I don't want you to either. You know, so let's work together to give this student a, a great first impression of aviation and and, and it's it's worked out wonderful. I mean, these these students are so appreciative of the opportunity, um, and even the ones who don't aren't selected to, for the scholarship, we still help them. And that's one of the biggest things I tell them every year is that look, uh, stay engaged. If you stay engaged in the FMA network, um, I'll help you. I'll find a way. We'll talk to someone. We'll we'll, we'll connect you with something. Get you. Uh, into this um, realm of aviation that you you're so passionate about so um, that that's something that's really key is to engage staying engaged and, and teaching them that a network is there for their benefit uh, network whether it's for aviation or music or business or what have you it's just you know hanging out and and being around people who have a similar uh, passion and or um, a job um, you can learn a whole lot from and, and so that really brings them in through the program gets them started gets them through the solo portion and then the whole time we're working behind the scenes with them to try to find out okay where's the next step where's the next money coming from how, how are we going to get you so whether it's from the james ray foundation you know through eaa or aopa or or a multitude of other uh, scholarship opportunities um, Glime, Paul Duty at Glime Aviation has been a big help um, too, and he's uh, uh, don't have it handy, but he has a whole list of, of scholarships around the country, um, and I send that to the students as well. And so then they, they, we get moving through, and uh, we've had so many of the scholarship winners go on and become pilots um, and commercial pilots and. Then we've had some that didn't win the scholarship that have done the same thing, and we try to celebrate as many as we can. Uh, as again, if they're engaged with us, then we'll do what we can, and through our sponsors, um, we'll send them gifts and, and things that that our sponsors donate for us. So it's it's something that it's not a it's not a scholarship where you just throw money and say here here you won this go eh, you know do what you you do and, and let us know if you did it. Um, it's something that we stay very closely attached with them and then, and then continue to help them 
along the way because you know we all we're young and those who have a passion for something that's the worst thing you could do is to is to block them out um and and so we know that we've all had these experiences and and so we try to keep them going and, and from students like um they're they're everywhere i mean they're they're in kent state they're at the uh, you know western michigan um they're the kids at uh, university of florida i mean university of alabama they're, they're they're going they're going places and they're moving up and and i guess part of the thing is that not only do we want to make sure that they are connected with the network uh so that they can um further their careers or their or their pursuits in aviation and music but we also try to teach them giving back um is something that's real important and again like i said these are these are kids that are um their band directors uh, music teachers say you know they they come early to help set up they stay late to help tear down uh whenever i ask i need help they they're there if the underclassmen need you know in a section need help with a a piece a part of music they're they're willing to step up and and help them learn it um so these they, they've already got that in in them they and now we're trying to get them to go further into aviation and or music and and use those characteristics and those skills that they're taught and and give back and part of it is to tell them that uh, we have them um, say okay i'm going to the flight school now i say okay well flight school's doing this for you they may donate extra hours or whatever and that's great uh, they don't have to but you know if they want to that's great but you what can you do for them you know and and they go what and i say yeah what can you do for the flight school can you can can you, you what what can you do and i think the biggest thing that i had started was that um we prepare a flyer and the top half of the flyer is about the flying musicians association uh and then the bottom half is about the flight school and we talked to the flight school about maybe a, a discovery flight a coupon or something um, again we're not asking for freebies for them but we're trying to give them something uh, which is advertisement and hopefully some more students and so they uh, with me they they prepare this flyer and then disseminate it throughout their area whether it be at a, a civil air patrols uh at whether it be at uh, music um, programs or whatever uh, at schools such so um, and and that's teaching them to give back you know and yeah the flight schools charging and stuff but the flight schools are also there to to help them and and like i said they have uh, murphy's pro aviation um donated 10 hours uh, of additional flight training um for one of our students over there in in tennessee and uh and, and you know it's like see they they can help and now you you do what you can to help them and, and then hopefully as they progress through their career they'll give back but the biggest thing i heard that really struck a, a tune uh, was that you know we're there's a bunch of folks out there with airplanes a lot of them are older and um we're really if they help us we're helping them because we're creating future pilots that can afford to buy their airplanes when the time comes that I want to sell them you know so one of our members gave that spiel at a corn roast uh, years ago and uh, and the money just started flowing and people started donating because they realized that you know we're doing something that's going to benefit them too in the in the long run uh, not just benefit aviation but the individual and when it comes to CAF I mean it's a great organization and uh warbirds i have a, a, a big passion for them and spent some years at the vintage flying museum in fort worth texas uh, working with doc hospers um and getting the chucky the b17 uh, g model there um, i flew in it and you know I, I booked it at air shows and um we went to the thunder over michigan up in um, ypsilanti i think there was eight b17s there and got to got to fly up there um you know i'm not 
I don't have an LOA or anything on the B-17, but I did get to sit in the left seat and fly a little bit. And, and of course, uh, the folks that went along, you know, the big trick was to uh, everybody moves to the very far back of the airplane and, and then they wait a few minutes or so and then they move to the front of the airplane. And so you're sitting up there trying to trim this thing. <laughs> Um, so it's a lot of fun, and, and I did the same thing with a B-25, uh, the Pacific Prowler, for a few years, and um, a lot of fun going to the air shows and 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 dealing with the military, uh, working in the, at air shows, military air shows as well, as civilian air shows. So I have I have a little bit of a passion for those uh, airplanes, and and a little bit of a hearing loss from the engines. Well, I uh, just want to shout out for those who don't know uh, Doc Hospers. Uh, uh, he and his wife, whose nickname was Chucky, and, and they, they, in B-17, he named after her. Um, it was uh, a very influential in the early Warbird movement. He helped found the uh, uh, B-17 co-op, which really brought a lot of the B-17 operators uh, together to help, first of all, to, to share information and to pool their money to buy uh, tires and, and certain parts that were getting harder and harder to find. So just uh, a shout out to him. Uh, he's really someone who's uh, never really looked for the spotlight, but uh, definitely was uh, influential, especially in the B-17 uh, community. Yeah, Doc was my AME. And um, and I did get to go to a, uh, a co-op meeting in uh, Seattle. Um, awesome meeting, um, great people. And Yes, you're right. They work to source uh, parts. Um, you know, they, they put pool together so that they can get a good year, somebody to to do a run of tires, and and then that'll last them for several years um, and such. And it just when we went to Seattle, it was a great great visit because we got to go see Paul Allen's collection in Arlington uh, before he moved it, um, and. I, it wasn't all of it. Trust me, I'm, I've heard that his collection is all over, all over the world, but um, it was so cool crawling under and around things in these hangars uh, at Arlington. Um, and, you know, it's like, oh, there's a zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and at that time they were rebuilding a, a B-17 and they had um, brought it down and were skinning it. And everything that Paul did was, original had to be original um so they accidentally got the wrong stamp on the uh, skins you know the alcoa stamp and uh, so they had to pull them all off and redo it um it, i think the tail section alone i think at the time i heard estimates that it was around six hundred thousand dollars just to do the tail section <laughs> where the gunner in the back it's like oh my but um but that was that, you know, his, his collection is just incredible. Um, and I don't know a part of it because we just saw it, you know, a few hangers and what he had on display. But, um, uh, you know, going to Boeing itself and, and seeing their B-17, which, of course, they have everything. They have they had the oxygen bottles and I mean, they, they had to they have it. So it was uh, theirs was pretty awesome as well. Well, as in all conversations involving aviation, we've strayed off the tub <laughs> the topic a little bit, but it's fun, right? Uh, but I want to come back to the the uh, the solo program, and if someone's watching, uh, either a, a parent, a, a band director, or a, a potential uh, student musician, student pilot, how do they how do they find out more, and how do they get involved? Well, uh, flyingmusicians.org is the website. Um, and you can just type in flying musicians and we're, we come up uh, in a, a search. Um, we have also a, uh, a blog site for our scholarship recipients who document their journey uh, learning to fly. And that's at fmasolo.org. And, um, and of course we're on social media as well. Um, to get involved, uh, you know, all you have to do is, is ask us and you know, we'll find something for you to do uh, to get involved. I think then I think the biggest thing I want to impress upon the, the parents and grandparents out there is that and they know this is it's a network. It, it really is a network of individuals who can help um, their son or, or grandson or daughter um, uh, pursue a passion 
aviation and, and same way with music. And this network has people who've been there, done that, people who are willing to help. And I, I think that's the coolest thing about being able to help these students is that it's a spectator sport in a way. And to me, it's probably one of the best spectator sports because we're catching these students at a really critical time. And we're watching them just in a four short years, they go from a high school senior to graduating college. Um, so within five years, they're probably out in the workforce. And it's just, it's just amazing to, to watch them grow and, and, and then hear about the stories that they have. And, and on the blog site, our members comment. Um, you know, so if, if somebody's having a problem like this one young lady up in Canada, they had fires this summer. So she wasn't able to fly and she was very determined to get her solo before she went to college, started college this spring or this uh, fall. And, you know, and so it's like patience, uh, grasshopper, uh, you know, really patience is, is probably one of the biggest things I learned from flight training was because I'm very, uh, I like to get things done and, you know, don't, I, I don't like to pedal around and, and well, when it comes to flying, I mean, you got the, you got the aircraft that you, it has to be flyable, right? It can't be down for maintenance or whatever. Uh, you got the scheduling of the aircraft, the scheduling of your instructor and you, 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 you know, now you have to look at whether your instructor might be sick, come down with cold or something, you come down with a cold or something, you know, uh, so, and then the weather, to throw that in there. Um, and before you know it, you have a, a ton of variables that, um, well, that's why they call it get their itis. You know, it can it can kill you. So you have to be in tune to all these things. And patience is something that, you know, besides character building, patience is is a big a, a big uh, factor. And so members chimed in and said, you know, this is the this is what happened. This, and of course, the the saying that I hate the worst is that uh, if you want to get there uh, fast, don't fly. You know, and it's like I hate that. It's like there's a way to do this. You can still do it. I mean, it's like that. It's like that difficult piece of music. I mean, it's you prepare yourself for these things. You know, you prepare yourself for approaches, for alternates, etc. I mean, there's ways to do it. Um, it depends on how much effort you want to put into it. And these students um, are the type of people that put effort into stuff. So I, I just. I can't wait for another five years to, to see where they are, you know, the, the first batch. And and hopefully we can raise enough funds to, to do more than one or two a year. It's been tough the last uh, year uh, because of the situation in the country. Uh, we're, we're not able to have the fundraisers that we had um, in, in 2019. Um, we were doing parties at Air Venture and Sun and Fun and, and return for donations uh, for the scholarship program. Uh, Hartzell Propeller was a, a big contributor and their, their uh, props and hops event. Four Flight contributed. Uh, we did music for their uh, apps and taps um, event. And then, you know, we had a Honda uh, Aeroshell team. Uh, you know, Dyer, I did, we did the TBM uh, party. And, uh, so we've done a lot of those things in the past, but we haven't had those opportunities and that's where we raise our funds. We also did hangar jams and well, the hangar jams were pretty much stopped too because they didn't want people around each other. So, uh, and we couldn't, if they were, we couldn't publicize it. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough. So I'm not gonna, uh, play the fiddle here, but it's certainly, everybody has a niche in, in life, and this is mine, and, and um, uh, if, if you can contribute to the association uh, for the scholarship program, great. Um, if you can't, I know you can contribute by, um, by going to the blog site, and when a student posts uh, about their latest um, cross-country trip or something, just, just give them a little attaboy, you know, on there. That's, that goes a long way, too. Support. And and speaking of uh, one of your bloggers, we're, we're looking at uh, a picture here of uh, a young man who uh, had kind of an interesting summer as well. <laughs> yeah, 
And this is so crazy because these kids are so focused and they're so into so many different things. Um, Jake is it's an interesting case. I do not pick the the recipients. Um, I I go through the 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 nominees and I pick the finalists. Uh, usually anywhere from 10 to 15. And then they're sent to the board and the advisory board then selects the, the recipient. Um, Jake, actually, I think he was 14, 13 or 14. Uh, he used to live in the same part of North Carolina that I was in. And I actually gave him a discovery flight in, in an airplane. And he was all uh, just excited about aviation. Um, we didn't have much contact at all after that. Uh, I moved and then they moved, his family moved up to uh, Pennsylvania. So, uh, but Jake was into music and his brother and him have cut an album and, and they perform regularly. And um, he comes up as a nominee one year, you know, out of the blue and I hadn't, you know, hadn't seen him or talked to him in years. And so it was like, okay, this is great. You know, I don't pick the finalist, so I don't really have, or the, the recipient, I don't have, but you know, we'll, we'll see. And, and he was just outstanding. I mean, so much of a go-getter. And so he, he won the scholarship and he started flying and uh, had some, some issues um, early on uh, navigating the flight training until I found John Still at uh, Still Flying LLC. And John's an, uh, a corporate pilot who is a, a military pilot and they got together and he, he got soloed. Well, he ran out of money and he did a, he, he applied for the AOPA scholarship and the others. And then he finally got the EAA scholarship um, and to finish the flight training. And he did. And he did his check ride. And the very next day, he hopped in uh, John Stills' Navion and they flew uh, to Oshkosh from Pennsylvania. Uh, so he got to fly to Oshkosh, uh, fly in, and I do not know if he did the Warbird arrival or not, but, um, you know, some of those Navions could probably get away with that. But um, he he did, and, and you know, so he got to immerse himself in that and, and play some music and meet some of the other members and such. So just an outstanding kid. Off to college he goes, you know. Uh, he's started already. So, I mean, this, this is a, yeah, a summer, an intense summer for him. It certainly was. And you can read, uh, as I said, Jake is, is one of the bloggers that, that you can see on the uh, Flying Musicians uh, website. It, they're fascinating stories, all of them. And it just reflects, I, I guess, all of us have interesting stories of how we got into aviation or, or certain situations or learning things. It's it, But it's fun to see it through uh, through someone else's eyes, especially uh, a young pair of eyes as, as uh, they're getting into the aviation world. Yes. And the... Um... The, there was two, two recipients that year. Uh, Jake was one and the other was Jacob. And you probably saw a picture of him. Uh, Jacob is at uh, Kent State and he just posted a blog uh, last night, I believe, uh, about where he is now in his flight training. He's, um, he's got, uh, he's working on his commercial. He's got over, just went over a hundred hours. He's uh, working on the, the instrument, too, and um, it, it, I think he'll be ready for that. They do the stage checks pretty soon. And, of course, he's playing in the band as well uh, as getting his degree uh, in professional aviation. Um, so just, I don't know, they're, they're incredible. The, ki the kids are incredible, and, and they're just, you know, I, I stay in touch with them and try to get them to continue to blog, and some of them do and have throughout college. Um, and uh, one one young young man now he's about to graduate from uh, University of Tennessee. I think they got beat by the Gators last weekend, which is sorry. I grew up in Florida, um, so it was like he's aerospace engineering. This last summer he was able to intern at um, Cirrus uh, in Knoxville, and he got to fly the the Vision Jet. And, you know, I got to meet the people and, and work there. And um, about two years ago, I think it was 2019, he was at, um, he came to Oshkosh and played in the band that uh, Elton Zell has, um, the Air Venture uh, concert band. And 
another member, a scholarship winner too, um, from that year, uh, played in the band as well. So it was kind of, he got to meet someone else and they've since uh, collaborated on some technical um, engineering uh, projects that they were working on because they're both going for engineering. <laughs> and I think uh, the one gentleman, the one uh, Aaron uh, is in, he's in Michigan and he is uh, building a, a legal eagle and he built the the bw happy w engine for it and, and stuff so he had a, a a technical problem that he had to solve and and uh, the two of them got together and collaborated on that and fixed it so re really awesome. interesting uh you mentioned kent state uh, uh university in tennessee uh, uh and some of the other uh, uh universities uh, any connections uh, at embry riddle one of our viewers was wondering oh yes um definitely and you know, I was working with them to try to get a band. They have a pep band. Um, and one of our uh, finalists uh, went there a couple years ago, and he was in the pep band. And um, so we've had several members that have come out of Embry-Riddle. And um, But as far as connections were, they said, hey, here, we no we haven't been able to connect that. That's the hardest part of, I think, any small association is, um, you know, the big guys have a, a huge overhead. Uh, so they really can't afford to to say, oh, don't donate that to us, donate it to someone else over here because, uh, so they can't. And I understand that. Um, but yeah, we, we we do what we can with what we have. But yes, all the colleges, um, I can't name them all, but there's so many that right. these, uh, student members go to and, and they keep us in touch and then I do go around and talk to them at the events at Air Venture and stuff that was, a lot of the colleges have um, a, a booth or tents and yeah I do go around and talk to them and I think Western Michigan is a, a, a big one because one of our founding members had just graduated and he was flying survey or pipeline patrol one of the two I can't remember and I know they're different but right out of college and and that's when the association was founded and he is now a captain on uh, a golf stream. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a G I don't know, six six hundred. I can't remember the, they changed the designations on him, but yeah, he's now a golf stream captain. And um, it, it's and he was just fresh out of college um, at Western Michigan, and and he he helped us at a lot of events, uh, Sun Fun and Air Venture, and continues to do so. And as a matter of fact, at Air Venture, we have a jam. Um, on Thursday evening at the in the ultralight area um, next to the red barn and and Josh has been a, a big big volunteer uh, for that um, event where again musicians or pilots come and every year and and see each other say hi and and share the music fascinating stuff it is and in the uh, few minutes we have uh, remaining wanted to uh, also touch on your uh, ambassadors program Yes, that's um, that's really fun. Um, these these folks from around the country and Canada and Mexico um, are members who um, they're usually out there in the forefront. They're not usually people who are uh, reserved, should I say, um, introverts, and they're they're out there and, and they're willing and able to talk to people. And basically, the biggest thing is for them to try to answer and field questions uh, from folks and direct them to the website and to how to join and, and such and, and or how to apply for or uh, for the scholarship. Um, so yeah, there's uh, Mike Manny up in Canada, um, our ambassador, he's in the military, he was in the band and then he's in another program in the military, but he's a professional musician as well. I uh, studied uh, jazz in uh, New York um, I can't remember the name of the school, but um, he is such a good ambassador that even though we have yet to receive any donations from Canada, uh, we have given three scholarships in Canada to, to Canadian music students. Uh, so it's just absolutely incredible. And it's all because of his you know, hard work and, and getting the word out to folks and, you know, um, Greg Knowles is um, a Northeast ambassador, and Greg is um, 
he's a commercial fixed and helicopter uh, pilot. Um, he's also uh, a do has a doctorate in music, and um, he teaches at Juilliard uh, School of Music. And um, they do they do music for uh, some programs around there and and you know, aviation. He just got finished doing one a couple months ago and. Um, it, it's just really great because he was in, he was the president of the Grammy uh, Association uh, for several terms and was on the board when he was out in California. Uh, he's still on the, um, the board and uh, is a voting member, I believe. But he's a recording musician, has a recording studio, and he teaches at Juilliard and he flies. And, you know, he's just one of these kind of guys that it's, you look at him and you go, how do you do all that? You know, how, how do you do that? Uh, if somebody's an ATP. That's great. I mean, that's a lot of work. A lot of a lot of hoops to jump through to, to get that. Um, how about a doctorate? <laughs> okay, and an ATP. You know, and it's like my gosh, uh, it's a lot of testing. It certainly is. Well, uh, John, we've just got a, a minute or so left uh, this evening. Any any final thoughts before we uh, wrap things up? No, no, we talked about a lot, uh, but as with aviation, we could go on for hours. Uh, it's just so much fun. I think that's the, uh, I don't know if the stream or not, it could be. Um, I'm looking around because I have my big screen on and my little screen's blank in front of the screen. So. Um, no, the, the, I, I think if you, if you know a student or any musician uh, who is also into aviation, um, or wanting to be in aviation, uh, certainly send them our way. Uh, we can we can help them navigate uh, through the the hoops that they have to jump through to to do that. And um, we, I was we talked a lot about student musicians, but when you talk to uh, other uh, older musicians and maybe um, professionals or not that. They, you can find the, the passion there too, just like you can anybody. Um, you say, oh, well, I never, I always wanted to fly, but I, you know, you know that's, that's not a, that's not a no. That's a, okay, how can I help you? Uh, how can, you know, let's, let's go for a flight. And, and that's happened so many times. And I think if, if everybody's just willing to share, the passion. If you have the passion, which a lot of folks in CAF and EAA and AOPA do, share it. Um, you know, look for the look for the spark. Find that spark in someone and and, and share it. Doesn't always mean that they're going to become a corporate or commercial pilot or or fly warbirds or or whatever. But um, it, it's certainly someone who will support aviation and support music uh, because they have that passion the same way with musicians i mean it, there's musicians out there who won't play in, in public um, but they're always in the front row of a, of a concert or whatever and it's like but they don't play maybe but they have a passion and there's a lot of people like that in aviation too that they maybe flew model airplanes or, or drafted you know drew plans or or, or watch movies and they just have a passion for it, but they never really got their foot in the door. You know, and we can help them do that. Awesome, John, thank you so much for joining us tonight and uh, sharing your passion and uh, your vision for bringing music and, and aviation together. It really is uh, it's quite a synergy and we look forward to uh, seeing more from the Flying Musicians Association. And again, if, if you can support them in, in any way, whether it's financial uh, or uh, just encouraging a young person to find out more about their, their scholarship program or um, just in general, helping folks find their way uh, into the aviation world. We'd uh, we'd certainly appreciate it. And the uh, Fly Musicians website uh, is there on your screen. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for tonight's Warbird Tube webinar. If you have any suggestions for future guests or topics you'd like us to cover, just uh, shoot Leah uh, Black an email at uh, uh, media at cafhq.org, and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, I get someone a uh, book to uh, fulfill that uh, request. We'll be back next Wednesday night at seven o'clock central time. Until then, thanks to uh, John Zapp for being our guest this evening. For the Commemorative Air Force, I'm Steve Buss. Good night. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, CAF. <laughs>